So today we're going to talk about the closure of a set, which is going to provide us with a way to talk about what points can be reached within a set, and this will eventually be used to describe the connectedness of spaces and give us a different way to look at closed sets. Alright, so before we get to uh, the properties of closure, uh, we need to actually rigorously define it, and we're going to define the closure of a set, some set A, to be the set A bar, which I don't really like the notation, but it's the analysis notation um, where you just put the bar over the set, and that's going to denote the closure. And the closure is simply going to be the set itself unioned with its limit points. That's what the A with the superscript uh, zero or O represents. Uh, so to take the closure of a set, you just take the set itself and throw in all of its limit points. <clears throat> so for the interval zero to one on the real number line, on the open interval zero to one, if we wanted to find the closure of this set, well, we would take the set itself and union all of its limit points. So in addition to all these points, the set itself, we're going to include the endpoints as well. So it, the closure of the open interval from 0 to 1 is just the closed interval from 0 to 1. So, in essence, the closure of a set is the set of all points that can be reached by the set. So, for example, in that example above, uh, the points 0 and 1 weren't in our original set, but we can get however close we like to that point, so <coughs> we include that in the closure, because it's a limit point. And another useful characterization of being in the closure of a set is as follows. So if you're in the closure of a set, um, that's only going to happen if and only if all open balls O about that point X have the property that, that O intersect A is non-empty. And so we'll just talk about that for a little bit. So if we have it being in the closure of A, then it has to be an A, or it has to be a limit point of A. If it's an A, then it's pretty obvious that O intersect A is going to be non-empty, because X would be a point of A, and then whenever we intersect that with A, we're going to get something that's non-empty. But it's a little bit trickier if it's a limit point, but it's not too bad, because if it's a limit point, that means every open set about that point contains some other point of A. So while that point X may not be an A, that open ball is going to contain points that are in A. So then that would then mean that the intersection of O and A is going to be non-empty. And then we could uh, run this in the reverse direction, but it's pretty clear. So one thing that we can ask is, if the closure contains all the points that can be reached by the set, then is the closure in itself closed? Because for this example, uh, whenever we took this open set and then included its limit points as well, then we ended up with a closed set. <clears throat> and the answer turns out to be yes. So if we <clears throat> let A be a set, and then we take its closure, so in other words, if we just throw in all of its limit points, then a closure is going to be closed. So to show this, we can actually use one of the results from the last video where we proved that a set is closed if and only if its complement is open. So to show that the set is closed, we can actually look at the complement of the set. 
so we're going to suppose that x is actually not in the closure and so if we want to show that this complement is open we need to take a point that's uh, in the complement of a closure so this point right here and then we would need to show that it's going to be an interior point in other words there would be some open set O completely contained and we need to show that it's an interior point my bad so we would have to show that there's some open set O such that O is a subset of the closure, eh, the complement of a closure. So, to do this, um, if we just write off the definition of it not being in the closure of A, then using this other definition up here, the definition 2, then that means that there would exist an open set O containing X, such that O intersect A is empty. But that's not quite what we want, um, because this would just imply that O is a subset of A complement. And that's actually not what we're after, um, because the complement of A closure if we look at this definition up here, would be a complement intersected with the complement of all limit points. <clears throat> and a complement is actually going to be a bigger set. So this is not going to do the job because we wouldn't know where O fits in in here. So uh, we're going to have to proceed by contradiction and we're going to suppose for the sake of contradiction that O intersect um, the closure of A is going to be non-empty. That would mean there's going to be some point y in that open set um, and in the closure of A. But um, it can't, that point y can't be an A because if it's going to be an O, then it can't be an A. So we would get a contradiction there. And so the only other case that we could have uh, would be if it was a limit point of A. So we need to suppose that it's a limit point of A and if it's a limit point of A then every open set containing Y intersects A at some other point. But if this is true for every open set uh, containing Y then surely it's true for that open set O that we discovered earlier. So we would have that it's empty and non-empty. Well, that's impossible. So, uh, we would actually have to suppose that O intersect A closure is actually empty. And if O intersect A closure is empty, then this would then imply that O is actually a subset of the complement of A closure. So that would mean that that point X that we found is actually an interior point of the complement of A closure. And so since the complement of our original set is open, then our original set, A closure, is actually closed. So this provides an easy way to make a set closed. So if you take a set and throw in all of its limit points, then it becomes closed. 
So we saw that the closure of a set is closed, but what if the set is already closed? How does that relate to the closure? And it turns out that they're actually going to be the same thing. And once again, we could think of that example from earlier. If we originally started out with that closed interval from 0 to 1, uh, so I'll just draw it again. So if we take this interval from 0 to 1 on the real line, and we, if we were to take the closure of this set, so let's call the set A, and then take the closure of it, in other words, just throw in all of its limit points, well, this set wouldn't change. It would be the same thing. So, and this turns out to be true in general. If a set is closed, then it's going to be equal to its closure. And so if you let A be a set, an arbitrary set, in a metric space, and we're going to see that the set A is going to be closed if and only if a closure is equal to A. So the right-hand side is pretty easy, considering what we've already done, because if A closure is equal to A, and we already know the closure of a set is closed, then that direction is pretty easy. And for the right side, um, we would get to assume A is closed, and we need to show that leads to a closure being equal to A. So, um, it's pretty clear that A is going to be a subset of A closure, and this is because A closure is defined to be A unioned with its limit points. So this direction is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but for the other direction, we'll have to use, um, so in other words, uh, we know A is going to be a subset of A closure, but for A closure being a subset of A, uh, we're going to have to use the fact that A is closed. So if A is closed, then the set of all limit points is contained within A. Remember, because if it's a limit point of a set, uh, and it's and that set is closed, then it has to be a point of that set. So that would mean a closure, which by definition is just a unioned with <coughs> its limit points, then. Uh, this is going to be a subset of A because the set of all limit points was a subset of A to begin with. <clears throat> and so from that, we can see that A closure is actually equal to A if it's closed. So we can actually see a very nice relationship. If a set's closed, then it's going to be equal to its closure. And that's going to be very useful in other proofs that come down the line. So the closure of a set is going to enable us in future episodes to talk about the connectedness of sets, and that's what's going to be in the next video. So if you like this video, uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Hope to see you in the next video.